Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, right now we have another amazing panel coming up and we are just moving people into the room. Uh, we have a discussion on games and art and the relationship between those two. We're going to be talking about art games and games as art and how that has a long and exciting history uh, in multiple different fields. So we have some amazing speakers. Uh, we have, can you give me the list again? I actually... It was Liz Ryerson, it was uh, Diana Polson, and at at Tales of Tales, whose name is escaping me right now. Ah, uh, one moment. I will bring everybody in. Just okay. give me a they'll minute to so type themselves. some. They'll, type they'll some do a much in. better job than I do. Oh, but thank you guys for being here, and you're gonna have another amazing panel ahead of you. All right, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Indie 3. Hi. Uh, do you want to do um, introductions now? That would be perfect. Okay, okay. Hi, my name is Liz. I'm uh, Ella Guro on Twitter, um, and I'm the one sort of like who threw together this panel. But um, uh, we have a couple guests with us. Thank you, by the way, uh, Diana and Aria from uh, Tale of Tales for doing this so last minute. Um, but I wanted to. Um, well, I'll, I'll get into that later. But um, if you want to do uh, introductions, uh, Diana or Aria, uh, please just go ahead. Um, okay, hi. Uh, thanks, Liz, for uh, inviting me. Um, um, I'm Aria Harvey. Um, I don't hear you. Uh, do you hear me? Oh, no. okay. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Aria Harvey. Um, I'm one half of Tale of Tales. Um, Michael is actually still in the room, uh, but still in the room. But um, and you might have a few things to say about all this too. Nope. Um, <laughs> I'm That's not excellent. To Americans. <laughs> but yeah, so we're we're like a, a game developer in uh, operating out of Ghent, Belgium, and um, yeah, we were invited last night to come and discuss this fascinating topic. Um, that's all I have to say about that right now. Okay, um, Diana, do you want to do um, an introduction, maybe on some of the, the work and stuff that you've been doing? Uh, certainly. Hi. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. I am Diana Polson. I am uh, one of the co-curators co-curator, of Vector Game Art Festival uh, with Scott Deeming and, Scott Deeming and Martin Zlinger uh, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I'm also an art historian who specializes in video games. I have a master's degree about this convergence between art and games. Uh, I, I my words seem to be escaping me. It's because my internet DC'd and now I'm having a panic attack. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I can hear you. <laughs> um, uh, so what I've, what I've done with a lot of my research is essentially try to write about games in the same way that art historians write about art. Because art and games do a lot of the same things. Uh, I specialize in particular in uh, collage, uh, which a lot of games, especially early early sort of hacking games actually appropriate from other games in order to make uh, new sort of creations as well as a, um, appropriation and I also talk about uh, neo-baroque aesthetics. So, cool. um, Okay, so I guess, I guess I wanted to just talk about like why I wanted to uh, do this panel. So I was originally invited to like do a panel about like art uh, like game designers branching out and doing other art because I like I make music and I've been making like uh, digital art and stuff with a, a program that my friend made um, called Become a Great Artist in Ten Seconds, um, and um, uh, and and so I was like tweeting about it online and saying like you know I really think that I need to do a talk about um, like why. Uh, why in order for like you know games to be viewed as or to to have like cultural legitimacy they need to interact with art more often and um that people need to be more aware of these convergences um and uh cameron kunzelman 
like tweeted at me and said, well, it's important that people know that there's a history behind this stuff and that, um, you know, we talk about that and there are problems with it and everything like that. But um, it's important to talk about this stuff because a lot of people don't know about it. Um, and I don't really know very much about this stuff, but I figured you guys would know a lot more, and so I'm glad that I found people. But um, I don't know. I guess, I guess my first question is wondering um, where you would start talking about <laughs> the history of like art and games. Like, wh where where do you start? Maybe personally, what what do you view as like significant when you're thinking about like art and games or like their convergences? Sorry if this is a vague question, but but hopefully we can go well, we can more give specific a vague there. Answer. We can give a vague answer. Um, I mean, where do you start? I mean, yeah, you can start with the cavemen or something, <laughs> you know, blowing <laughs> yeah. uh, or aboriginals uh, blowing uh, paint over their hands to cover cave walls. Um, but I mean, <laughs> you know, if you want to talk specifically about video games, um, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that um, are perhaps haven't been considered video games, but that or 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 uh, aren't considered real games or whatever. You know, like you could talk about the Fluxus movement in art specifically. I mean, or, which isn't video games, but it's like you know, um, art at games as art um, or um, things of like the, of that nature. But that's not very like related to the things that we know today. Uh, I guess as games or video games. Um, so maybe I mean, it should be though yeah maybe it should be <laughs> maybe it should be i mean because you have something like uh brenda breath brenda romero's uh train which was definitely sort of uh, uh an inheritor of of that sort of strand of thinking of yeah. games as art you know um i'm gonna let diana jump in here though because i can just ramble. okay <laughs> go for it diana oh it's a big question I mean, it's connected in a lot of different ways. I mean, uh, games have popped up in art uh, throughout the ages. Uh, you'll, you'll see in sort of in representation, uh, people playing games, uh, even uh, movements like abstract expressionism as well as color field painting are sometimes based off things like backgammon boards. I'm going to get into a little bit of Canadian sort of regionalism here, but like, uh, Quebec folk art, uh, a lot of Canadian abstract artists actually refer to a lot of board games that Quebec folk artists uh, made because they enjoyed the sort of aesthetics of it and then moving into like the 1920s I mean you've got surrealism which takes some of its ideas from dataism uh, and they actually had some games like the exquisite corpse where players uh, would say draw or write something and then pass it on to the next person that's in this keep creating things um, and it just kind of keeps growing from there. I mean, in the 1950s you've got the independent group who are the fathers of pop art. So pop art for those of you who don't know, that's like Andy Warhol, um, um, sort of uh, Campbell Soup Cans. But before that, there's the independent group, and they were the ones who were looking at ads as well as cars and and science fiction movies and saying, yes, these things are really relevant. We should use that as a reference for what we're making because pop culture is super important. And I'm by getting you it, sort. Of... You were gonna say? I'm getting you sort of intermittently. I, yeah, I'm getting you a little bit intermittently on the, the thing. I don't know if that's coming through on the stream. I'm just letting you know. Oh, it's well. It's been it's fine here. Fun. Yeah, it's been fine here. Oh, okay, okay. That's just my on my end then. Sorry. <laughs> Continue anyway. No worries. Uh, so the 1950s, the uh, British group, the independent group, uh, headed by uh, Richard Hamilton uh, and a few other people, uh, spans it together and basically thought, well, pop culture is relevant, and by denying pop culture, you're actually saying that art can't expand outside its means. So you have to accept pop culture and just sort of move on and use it as the widest sort of thing of influence. And then art continues to progress and we get interactive art, which is bizarrely largely ignored in game studies for quite some time. And I think now people are like, hey, interactive art and games are actually very connected. I mean, like think of electroplankton. I mean, that's Based off yeah. that's based off Toshio Ai's interactive art projects, so it's it's not really that far off. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be that way at all. Um, so I, I guess another uh, question was um, I was um, Aria did a panel at Indicate East about sort of like her and Michael's background um, in in like net art specifically and i kind of um i don't know if that's something that you studied diana but i kind of wanted to ask um 
Aria at least like what it was like when she started out doing like that kind of digital net art and like how that sort of transitioned and what yeah. happened to that whole sort of scene and how that transitioned into games for for you yeah yeah at least for me well but but uh, there's always been sort of a strong uh band a strong connection between or at least i feel between the internet and video games anyway i mean um so i guess i should say that that before michael and i started making games as tale of tales uh we were uh web designers and net artists that's like sort of so to say that um, when the internet came along in the early 90s, um, a lot there was this sort of subset of people who were building things on the web who thought it was the internet itself was interesting as a as a as a format and as a location to make um, their artwork, and that took a lot of different um, forms. Um, for some people, it was about the internet itself, like so people made like artworks about like connections, network connections. There were, there were sites like, there was one called Adaweb, um, named after um, the woman, the first uh, woman uh, scientist, whatever, uh, Ada, uh, whose name escapes me. But anyway, yeah, there was, and there were sites like, uh, like Rhizome. Rhizome is still around, for example, rhizome.org, where you really, uh, there were- Yeah, I, I read that site sometimes. Yeah, these became hubs for like, a lot of people who thought that art on the internet should be, uh, uh, more important, you might say. So there was this whole, this whole sort of time where there was, uh, it was uh, very important even um, to the, well, important to net culture, most of all, I'll stress. Um, but it also sort of had a bleed out effect. The types of artworks that were made for the internet were collected by American museums like SF MoMA, um, the MoMA itself, um, the Whitney Museum, you know, it, it was sort of a bi-coastal like sort of trend for a little while for them to connect, collect net art. Um, also in Europe, there sprung up lots of festivals. There was Ar already, I think, Ar Ars Electronica, but they um, started emphasizing um, internet art more. Um, there was uh, Transmediale, which is probably still around. Um, and then just countless, countless festivals in Europe. Um, and the important thing about all that was that it showed, it had a lot of like uh, social impact, like in terms of, if you were on the internet, you can encounter art and artwork, like sort of anywhere, sort of randomly. And this was like incredibly important. I mean, it was just, it felt really um, like art could be a, a part of your daily life in, 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 a, in a very organic way, I guess. And a lot of artists um, who were making that art took video games as their inspiration, like pretty much from the very start. I mean, there were tons of, um, like, I guess by like nine, 1999, 2000, um, it was sort of a thing, like a, a big deal uh, thing that where artists were making uh, mods of Doom and Quake, um, like, or, 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 inter or interventions in the games like Counter-Strike and stuff. And um, it was really- Yeah, I was, I, I had seen a bunch of Tomb Raider or there's that Tomb Raider mod. What what is it called? Um, it's like a feminist mod. Um, or no, it was was it like a short film? Oh god, I can't remember. Uh, I'm remember sorry. There, I'm thinking of things like Velvet Strike, which was um, an intervention into uh, Counter Strike, where um, basically artists made like stickers, like posters that you could put into. Uh, people could anybody could put these into a mod, like these posters. But it was sort of an anti-violence protest within Counter Strike, for example. Or you had QDX Doom, which was a real sort of breakdown of like Doom, where like everything became like sort of the surreal, um, very cutie fantasy. Um, Michael and I made like an Adam and Eve mod for Sounds Quake excellent. 4 Arena. Quake 4 Arena, where like your avatars in Quake um, could be either Michael or my myself, like sort of naked running around in Quake. And we put our guns in the floor, you know, like so that we couldn't shoot. <laughs> and, like, I don't know, just all these crazy things that um, artists are doing. And a lot of these people came from net art. I mean, net art wasn't like, oh, a GIF or a JPEG on a page. I mean, that was like actually using code to um, sort of manipulate the browser to break it down, to like make unexpected things happen. Uh, yes, to even crash people's browsers on purpose. Like you could get away with a lot because it was before banner ads or at the very beginning, it was before pop-up um, bra window, browser windows became this sort of synonymous with like, you know, somebody trying to like hack your computer or something. So it was like, you had a lot of freedom with JavaScript to like do all kinds of things. So we were really interested 
in the beginning when we started working with video games, I mean, because we had had all this freedom on the internet and all this stuff, I mean, it sort of felt like inter video games were a, an extension of that. It was like, um, okay, all you got to do is program this, this application and people, you know, make an experience for people and people will download it and play it. And, you know, and that was sort of uh, to us really interesting, more interesting than making a mod of something was to make something completely from scratch from like for, for ourselves. And, and we saw this as like a really powerful thing to do. I know that uh, Julian Oliver, who worked on the game, uh, the art game, Escape from Woomera. I don't know if you guys know that one. That was like one of the really early sort of extensive, um, like sort of mod of, I think it's a mod of Half-Life actually, um, but it's amazing. And it was a, actually sort of a commentary and a protest of um, the immigrant internment in Australia. Um, um, but it got a lot, it was sort of the biggest um, art mod of a game at the time, as I recall, around 2000-ish, 2005-ish. Uh, um, and uh, that's a real one that everyone should really um, look up and know about if you're trying to like educate people about the power of this sort of stuff. Excellent. Um, I remember uh, reading, Kara Ellison did a piece on Catherine um, uh, yeah, she and talked she talked about, about that recently. It. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, somebody posted the link in the in the chat. Cause... Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so um, I'm going to ask uh, Diana um, uh, about uh, the, the festival that she co-curates in a second. But I, I just wanted to uh, ask one more question about um, uh, to, to you, Aria, about what do you think was the lineage of this like net art scene? What do you think like is what do you think has happened to it and where has it gone and and stuff like that because i i remember seeing a lot of that stuff and then like yeah sort of became well, well, less in vogue after a certain point yeah well the fun thing what funny thing was it was sort of an accident to begin with you know like all these things nobody does anything <laughs> i don't think any art movement is started on purpose you know what i mean like it's sort of like yeah. everyone just found themselves being creative on the internet and then sort of everybody met everybody. You know what I mean? You sort of just ended up on the same mailing list. You emailed each other. I mean, it was really nice. I mean, it was international. It didn't matter so much who you were or where you were from. It just mattered what you did, you know? And no, there were no real names really. I mean, you know, it, 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 so it was really free. I mean, and, um, and the exchange of information was pretty amazing because, you know, all, you could always view the source of each other's pages and figure out how things were made and then, you know, end up in a chat with each other on IRC or something. And um, But what happened was, I think that uh, a lot of people became who were artists or who became artists or became more serious about their artwork um, sort of abandoned the Internet on the one hand, like, uh, to do things like that were more lucrative or that could be put in a gallery or, you know, like I said, that all these museums were interested and there was a little bit of a buzz around the activity that was going on with net art, but um, some people sort of transitioned sort of into like making gallery art, you might call it. So a lot of people, I mean, like um, a lot of the early net artists like Vukosic, for example, um, I know that he had a quite a extensive gallery career. There are some who were like even more sort of into it, like this um, collective uh, called the Zero One Zero One Collective. Um, they they kind of they're in Italy and they really had had, had a total art career after that. Um, so I'd say so there was a fraction of the net artists who just sort of went off and became regular artists, quote unquote. You know. And then some people just were like doing it for okay. fun and like hacking things and like, you know, and, and got bored and went on, you know, <laughs> and then there's people like us who transitioned into other things in new media and like got more serious about programming and or, or making um, experiences for people, you know, some people, I mean, it, it, it wasn't ever like some tight knit group that like, you know, what intended to do something specific. It was all kind of um, just about um, exploring. Really, I mean, it was stuff. It was almost like you were you were sitting there, and and something new was invented, and you just wanted to play with it all the time. You just wanted to make stuff for the internet all the time. So, yeah. Anyway, I guess everyone kind of felt that way, and then some people cool. went on. And... It's kind of amazing because I mean that sort of net art excitement is, has reemerged with with Twine, 
because uh, a lot of people are doing very yeah, similar true. things with with Twine that they were doing with NetArt, uh, except for this time you don't really need to know how to do HTML or JavaScript. I mean, it, it, it makes it a little bit better if you know HTML and, and jQuery, but it's pretty exciting. That <laughs> you're, you're sort of seeing this like second coming of NetArt, NetArt and these like interesting like personal stories. I mean, I've I've played different Twine games about uh, things like borderline personality disorder. Or um, uh, Merrick Copus has one I called, I think it's called Conversations with My Mother, which is about being transgender yeah. and all, all sorts of other kinds of wonderful experiences that we now have a, a way to talk to people about about things that, you know, weren't being talked about uh, using uh, games in sort of a net art kind of form. Yeah, that's true. Um, and like, I, I don't know, because... Oftentimes when I when I see this older net art kind of stuff and and I look at like Tumblr or something just like random Tumblr blogs like it, it is very much like in that style like there's a lot of that kind of like um, aesthetic or like like what was it vaporwave which is like a, a a style of like music it's kind of like the retro future kind of style I always associate that back with kind of net art yeah, I mean, I think it's funny that no art can be considered a style. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I understand what you mean. I mean, I mean, it's just it's, it's, it's like funny vaguely that, influenced. Yeah, no, no, I, I totally know what you mean. It's like, but it's what it used to be like born of, of like complete limitation. Like you really had no bandwidth, and you had sixteen colors. You know, yeah. Now it's sort of like I think that's why. No, no. It is like a, a, a fetishized aesthetic, like... Yeah, the only thing I'm mostly happy about is the, the survival of animated GIFs. I'm like totally happy about that. <laughs> the, the thriving of animated GIFs. But I'm disappointed that the blink tag no longer exists. So yeah. And marquee. Aww. The marquee tag. Those were great. <laughs> oh, memories. I don't know, like... Yeah, when, when, when I used to like go on the internet and like, um, I used to go to like... I was like a kid, I'd go to like uh, NES, like 8-bit, like nostalgia kind of sites. This was like in 1999 or 1998. And like they, they had all these web rings and stuff. And like, I don't know, it's it's interesting to me to think about how so much of that stuff has been like co-opted and colonized by like, like Twitter and Tumblr and all that kind of stuff. And there isn't like, I, I feel like if if there's a time that we could really use something like where people are making their own H broken HTML pages and all that kind of stuff. It it should be now because that's like the universe that we live in now. It's so dominated by, like our culture is so dominated by these like social media and stuff. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that's another thing that happened. Um, that that a, a lot of people forget that all this is stuff that you can just make. I mean, that's kind of what I liked about the various indie game scenes out there is that everyone knows kind of like, or is trying to always remind like the generations coming after them. Hey, you know, you can just make this stuff. That's uh, to me what game jams are all about and like, and everything. I mean, because yeah. with the internet, it's completely a lost art. It's practically a lost art. Everybody thinks, oh, you need Ruby on the rails and you need like, you know, JavaScript and you need all this stuff. No, all you need is a text editor. You know what I mean? It's like, and, 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 and exactly. And just... <laughs> so, yeah. So I think that in a way, like we were drawn, I know I was drawn to um, independent game development because it was still something that you could just do yourself. And this had, is all tied into like all kinds of issues about like, work economy like you know capitalism whatever like just this feeling of being in control of like your own work which was why we as artists never wanted to go the gallery route or you know the pure like oh i'm gonna be an artist route you know fine arts route the art world route you know because we never liked that whole idea of there being like these sort of middlemen between us and an audience um at least not, I mean, we, we accept that all of these things are out there and that one needs like certain types of middlemen, you know, but at the same time, the overriding sort of motivation to make our work is that we can um, control it, that we can put it out there ourselves, that we can talk directly to the audience, that we can get their feedback, they can talk to us more importantly, and that it's not some sort of like white cube or black cube situation um, at all. So that's just uh, sort of... okay. <laughs> um, I should get to asking Diana about the, the festival that she co-curates because I wanted to hear about that um, and she doesn't 
said I haven't given her the chance to speak very much about this. So, um, so I, I don't know much about it, but I, I would like to hear more about like the kind of games that you curate. It's called Vector Fest, right? Yeah, Vector Game Art Fest. Uh, we just uh, the three of us refer to ourselves as a, a team Vector. Uh, this February was the second year that we've had it uh, going. Uh, so. Yeah, it started in 2013 with a, a group of people. I wasn't uh, on the team at that point of time, and, and now it's myself, uh, Martin Zlinger, and Scott Deeming uh, who run it. And uh, we essentially show our art games. Uh, so we had three different shows running, as well as screenings. We had one screening that was all like early animation. Uh, we had another one that was total. it was all machinima. machinima. And so we showed work by like Kent Sheely, um, there is one piece, and uh, the artist's name is is escaping me right now, uh, where it was Bomberman, and they had taken taken Bomberman, and they had edited had edited the sound to actually explosions from. Uh, shown uh, various kinds of games. Uh, we showed uh, one called Ascent uh, by Oscar Rabbi, who's an Australian artist, uh, which was a Oculus Rift game uh, where he is uh, sort of telling you a story that his father told him about this massacre that he participated in. And so you, you actually listen to Oscar talk and you sort of follow him up into this sort of scene of of the massacre happening and you kind of have to make sort of choices on how to get there. Um, so we, we try to pick a little bit more of sort of edgy games. I mean, some of them are fun. We, uh, one of our shows was Punk Arcade, which was sort of a, a little bit lighter. Uh, and one of the games, we co-curated that with a group known as Punk Arcade, which is uh, Lee Tussman and uh, Sarah Brin. Uh, one of the lighter ones was uh, a game where you're a Martian uh, going to a high school dance and the sort of awkwardness of, of that kind of interaction because I think we've all had that moments where we're at a dance and we feel a little bit uh, out of place. Yeah. And other sorts of events, I mean, we had workshops where you could... Yeah. Uh, uh, workshops where you could learn how to sort of glitch out games and make uh, glitch art. Uh, we also had a huge uh, performance by the Avatar Orchestra Metaverse, uh, who are a group of musicians as well as uh, designers and programmers who perform music from Second Life. And all their instruments are, have been programmed. Uh, it's really fantastic. Like, it doesn't look like a tar, but it might be like almost this half moon kind of shape with this aura, like a rainbow sort of color going through it. And then it plays different tones that they've made. And then the, mus the instruments also project images. Uh, so we had that as well. But it's all these sort of games that uh, people are usually making on their own um, about uh, very individualized experiences, sometimes with a sort of political bent, uh, other times with a more sort of personal sort of story, and other times just sort of uh, commentary uh, and a little bit of light fun. Um, yeah, just sort of all over the place. And we just found that... Cool. Uh, yeah, it's really all over the place. We just found that there was no one really talking about these and the three of us... Uh, love this kind of stuff and just really wanted to take these people who we thought were fantastic and, you know, hey, come come and see these things, play them. You know, sometimes the best way to communicate with somebody is to actually experience kind of what they're going through. And that's one of the best things about games is that you can talk about very complicated experiences and get it across in a way that you can't with, say, a single picture or, say, words. Excellent. Um so I, I guess I wanted to ask you, because um, you mentioned Machinima, um, and I was like, uh, Kent was the one who was, uh, I was originally trying to ask, but he couldn't be on this uh, panel, but he mentioned it, and um, back when I was in school, my, uh, my film professor actually showed me this Machinima, uh, it was called My Trip to Liberty City by uh, Jim, what's his name, Jim Monroe? I think that's his name, because um, I met him. But anyway, um, it was like about his like it, it was he, just him walking around in GTA like narrating his experience and like it was kind of like a comedy video. He's just being very relaxed. He's and like um, uh, and I always thought that was really funny. And like I see that now people do that all that kinds of stuff. 
stuff with Let's Plays or whatever, but the Machinima had like a kind of a different sort of background. So I, I don't know, um, perhaps like um, I'm interested in hearing more about um, the the history of that, if you if you can speak to that. Uh, it's exceptionally varied. I mean, the topic matter, I mean, the funny ones are, are really common. Uh, when I first started studying it, a lot of them were just sort of like funny, funny things. I think one of my favorites was taking Kingdom Hearts and then um, replacing the audio with like certain uh, quotes from other movies where so Mickey Mouse would say very sort of vulgar things. And it just, of course, makes you laugh because it's absolutely absurd that this childhood character would say things like, I have a 13 inch penis. And you're just like, okay, Mickey, that's that's really fanta- fantastically funny. Uh, and then there's other ones where it's been a bit more serious. Um, oh, and I'm forgetting the name. Uh, there's one that was made in a, a software known as the Movies uh, about uh, about in France about the riots in France, and it was just sort of uh, their uh, their experience of what was going on in these different riots. Uh, and the sort of stuff that was not being talked about in the news. So you've got that sort of completely different angle where people are using it to actually discuss very personal events as well as uh, political events that are not as, uh, that are not being talked about. Uh, and then there are completely other, peop- other people, um, uh, Angela Washko, uh, she does performances in World of Warcraft, uh, and one performance that she did for Vector 2013, uh, she went on one of the servers and went into Ogremar, which is like the head head city and uh, for the horde and started to ask people what they thought of feminism and try, it's got all these different sort of responses excellent <laughs> um, uh, there's also one like called dead so, in iraq did you, did go, you go hear ahead. about that one about dead in iraq that was a, a performance by oh his name has escaped me but I'm gonna, I'm gonna search it out in just a minute but he would go into um, like uh, shooter games and just recite um, the names of the the dead sol- soldiers who who have died and, and and civilians. I guess if he'd get his name on their hands on their name, like just the names of these people. Yeah, who have died. I've I've like, heard of this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's another way of this happening. Wow, that's really powerful. Especially if it's uh, it's online and you're not not expecting it, that would be a very uh, sort of upsetting thing to sort of stumble upon. That reminds me, I had a friend who would like, he played Unreal Tournament and he'd go in and like go into the chat room and just ask people about their dreams and like what they want to do with their life. <laughs> he'd just like spend like his time doing that. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> anyway. Um, so uh, I guess one, um, I did want to talk about like the influence of art aesthetics and ideas on like both like game design and game aesthetics for to both of you but first i i wanted to say something about um so i guess my impression with a lot of these like the the historical like game art spheres is like there's like accessibility problems like that they're very much in the academic space and a lot of these games like i I was reading about like edo storm edo stern game um is at ucla i guess and like it's like People are talking about how interesting this game was, but it's like has a limited run and then it's never like shown again. Um, and th- that I find that really inherently frustrating because I, I don't like. I mean, I went to school, but I'm I don't consider myself an academic, and like the kind of stuff that I like is doesn't really fit any particular category. But um, I think there was there's one thing that I wanted to say because like uh, a, a while back. Um, on on Tumblr, a couple Tumblrs that I follow that post like old video game screenshots or whatever, um, were posting about this. There was a there's an electronic artist named uh, One O Tricks Point Never. Uh, he's on like Warp Records, and his yeah, stuff is yeah. very like kind of yeah, new agey kind of like like old net art. I don't know. It's in in the lineage of a lot of that stuff. It's very like conceptual. Um, but he had a video for one of his uh, songs. It was. It's called like Still Life or something, and the the name of the the name of the guy was like who made it was like a new media artist. I think his name is John Rothman, um, and right, it, like the video was like Google this weird narrative of all these. Yeah, yeah, and like it was like all these like random pictures from 4chan, like of like really kind of disgusting, like um, you know, game culture crap, and like I don't know. 
and but there are a lot of like images used from um these blogs that that i follow that people like you know play old um like um uh, pc 88 pc 98 that's like an old japanese computer games um and they were really upset because they they felt like his work was inherently like completely exploitative and it was kind of like using this kind of subculture in a way that was like kind of co-opting it and using it for shock value and i don't know it, it kind of like that whole thing made me think about how like the art world often seems like it's it has this weird relationship with um like you know pop culture or like these like subcultures in that they they're both like kind of um objectifying them and like putting them up in in really strange ways and talking down to them at the same time like and not taking their work seriously and i don't know i guess that's a, a dialogue that i wanted to ask both of you about is that like um because that's something that i've noticed is a problem i don't know do either of you have anything you can say on this um a lot of the art I feel like Diana has tried to talk, but I can't hear her now. Uh, I can't, I can't oh. hear her either. Sorry. Uh, one moment. Um, Looks like we've had a, a brief network hiccup. Uh, if we could go back about oh, okay. a minute in the conversation, I apologize for that. Yeah, maybe restate the question. A uh, little okay. Bit. Okay, I will, I will truncate the question so that like we get the full whatever. Um, but yeah, okay, so I guess I was wondering about like the way... I, I have problems with the relationship like often that the art world has with like subcultures and like pop culture in that it feels like oftentimes it's like both like sort of talking down to these cultures and co-opting them and using them in a way that's, that's kind of not um, respectful to some of the, the work and and things that people do in these cultures and like the example that i was saying was this video for this uh electronica group 10 tricks point never that had um all these like images uh that were i mean it had a whole bunch of stuff from 4chan and like weird selfie pictures of of like furry people and and all that kind of stuff yeah. and it also okay. had um i i think yeah. i understand what you're saying though like well, there's a couple of things here. I mean, first of all, you have to understand, and or at least, okay, this is going to come from a really cynical place in my in my world, but that um, the art world is very much like uh, clickish, uh, just as much as I would say as as the game industry would be, right? So it's sort of like if you're sort of hooked into that um, into that scene, you know, like John Raffman is, you know. To the extent that he is, you know, that you're going to get attention for anything you do. Another one would be like Corey Archangel, who makes a lot, who kind of came from that art and music scenes and, you know, does a lot of sort of hip slick work that sort of talks about games, you know, like he did the Mar Super Mario Clouds, where it's like Super Mario Brothers, but he takes out everything except for the clouds. And then this is art, whereas Mario isn't, you know, it's like that's that's the kind of thing you're probably talking about, where yeah. it's like sort of co-opting. But and while uh, acknowledging it and then talking to, down to it at the same time, um, but it's it's just a scene, if you know what I mean. It's like it's the funny thing is that anyone thinks that there's a such thing as high art or low art or something. I mean that just doesn't exist anymore. So that's the first aspect of that, in my opinion. Um, the other aspect of that is that um, the art world doesn't care and doesn't really want, know what to do with either new media or video games. I mean you get MoMA. The Museum of Modern Art in New York City collecting video games, but it's for their design department, you know? It's like they're not holding this up and saying, oh, this is like, you know, high art. They're saying, no, this belongs in the sphere, in the realm of design, which is actually the proper place to put it. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not like they know what to do with this stuff. So when you have, they have an artist who's sort of hooked into their world, knows how to talk the talk and walk the walk and has the connections and goes to the parties and whatever, you know, they, they sort of go, okay, this is interesting. This is using something 
you know, they're all sitting there going, oh, Facebook, I know Facebook, Google Earth, I know that, you know, he's taking that and he's appropriating it. I know what appropriation is. You know what I mean? So it's sort of the simplistic, at least from my <laughs> point of view, this sort of simplistic putting two and two together. It's not like they're going to sit there and actually respect what we do. I guess is what I'm saying. If anyone's sitting there respect it, waiting for the art world to respect video games, that's probably not going to happen um, and shouldn't, shouldn't happen, actually. Um, but yeah, that's just how I see it. Maybe Diana has a different point of view on this sort of stuff. So. Yeah, I think yeah, I DC'd I, I, while Diana, I was talking. Diana, do you have a response? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. I mean, okay. first of all, ouch. Go ahead. <laughs> I respect what you guys do, but I mean, like I said, I'm an art historian who specializes in video games. <laughs> Uh, so I really think what, what you guys are doing is, You're very you know, special, Diana. That, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but uh, no, because it all is part of visual culture, and that is our culture, and these things are very relevant. Um, what you were saying about making fun of um, or looking down at different scenes, I mean, uh, personally, I don't know any artists uh, who are working in games who look down on their scene. They're usually very well involved in it and are doing it with a certain level of sincerity. I mean, there are, of course, always going to be people who look at it and, you know, snap their nose because it doesn't matter what you do. There's always going to be somebody who is insecure and needs to criticize, you know, or just be kind of snobby for some reason. Uh, so I won't speak to those people, but most those people are very sincere about what they're doing. And um, I feel like the art world is slowly going to start uh, respecting uh, video games and new media as as things progress. I mean, it's not going to be very quick. I mean, the sort of joke is that it takes about 30 years uh, for the art world to accept anything new. I mean, when photography came in, people people didn't know what to do with it. It was like, why are we doing this when there's painting and, and sculpture? And then eventually photography is like a fantastic medium. And same with uh, film and video. So it does take a little bit of time. I mean, of course, we're not necessarily going to be like, hey, the biggest, I'm, I'm just going to use Call of Duty, is the greatest work of art. I mean, that's not necessarily going to happen. I mean, Transformers isn't going to be necessarily considered an art film, but there are going to be games uh, that will sort of fit into that sort of uh, bracket where it might be a little bit more cerebral or it might do something that fits. But then you get into the problem, of course, trying to define art, which... Uh, just it it doesn't work. There, every every possible definition uh, kind of fails because there's always somebody who's going to find a, a different way to make something that's going to subvert the previous meaning. So I I don't know. I think that yeah, it, there's hope. Yeah, you know, I wasn't meaning to say that the artists weren't weren't genuine or or were being insincere at all. I mean, or that they weren't, or even that to say that they aren't making uh, good artwork for the oh. context in which they work but oh i but, wasn't talking about you i just meant uh, in in relation to the question i didn't think you meant that at all okay but yeah i, I, do, I, I guess I, I'm, yeah i'm just not i'm unsure if video games need all that anyway you know i mean i don't mean that in the sense of like um, status <laughs> as a status thing at all no, no no um what i mean more is like there there's more to that it seems like okay and this is another way i come off harsh but that, that the art world is sort of uh, irrelevant in most people's lives, whereas video games have a greater chance of reaching um, a, a larger public and becoming meaningful to their lives. And that's because video games come from all different angles. That and is that true. Is, and as games sort of expand and, and reach more people by diversifying, by making um, different types of video games for more types of people and encompassing people's experience and, and allowing them to um, sort of, uh, I don't know, to, to examine the world in all the different ways that video games can. I mean, it in a way uh, uh, becomes a more important medium. It's much like film. It's more close to film or architecture or something like that, or theater or something, um, but like a, than, than it would ever be to sort of art world art, in my opinion, but I'll leave that, I'll leave it at there. <laughs> I don't know. I disagree. I mean, uh, theater, it comes a little bit like is influenced by painting. I mean, they're all actually very heavily interconnected. I mean, people think they're so incredibly removed from art and they really aren't. I mean, a, a lot of it, I think, is just this general sort of cultural uh, snobbery where we think, hey, art is not for you. This is not not something for you. And that's not right. I mean, the, the person that was teaching that, uh, you know, that's not what I teach in, in my classes. <laughs> Art is actually for everybody. It is, in fact, an entertaining medium. It, the One of the problems is that you do get art that is a bit pretentious, and it might be sort of a weird in-joke about some theorist that most people have never heard about. I mean, I'll laugh and be like, ha, 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 that's about Foucault. Uh, but for other people, that's not necessarily 
uh, for them because they don't have that background. Yeah, and I think that's a shame yeah. because indeed, a lot, if you go to like museums, like I know everybody's just run, wandering around Europe being a tourist, but the museums are packed. You know, people are looking at the old masters, they're looking at like painting, sculpture, you know, and in amazement, they're looking at all, all architecture in amazement, you know, and they want to feel amazed. They want things to touch them, they want images that touch them. You know, I just think that I find that uh, video games are something that speaks a vocabulary that people understand now better than painting. Like they may be in one, sit in front of the Mona Lisa or whatever, like in wonder, but it's like not a wonder that they, that they, it's more like the wonder of like thousand years or thousands of years of like this aura of this famous painting, you know, whereas a video game can sort of be a more immediate That's true. moment, you know, a more immediate moment of like, oh, yeah, yeah you well, have an artistic experience, you know, and... Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the nature of art, like, um, is that, you know, it always changes what people sort of can connect with emotionally and what, what like, is immediate response to them. And now it's, like, movies or video games because that's, like, what is culturally present. At the time, like, of paintings, I'm sure that that was, like, big. But, yeah, there's this, like, historical sort of narrative, and the historical narrative it takes a while to form, um, and so, like you know doesn't always necessarily apply to the current cultural like zeitgeist or whatever but um i guess like as far as like art and um architecture uh, being close to architecture and uh movies as um or video games being close to architecture and movies than art i would say that like i feel like video games encompass so many different things that it's hard to even make a a summary about them but like I guess I would think of them as, like, I mean, I still like the sort of interactive art idea, although maybe even that is too reductive. Um, but I guess before we go, I wanted to ask one more uh, question to you guys, because we didn't really talk about this a lot, um, about, like, in art influences, influences from other media and art in, like, either works that you like or have examined, or your own work, or whatever, and... Um, I mean, for me, like, just personally, like, I mean, the, the the stuff that I've made, like, a big influence on me is, like, music, obviously, um, electronic music, um, and uh, also, like, David Lynch, and, um, you know, some, I'm trying to think of what else, um, I have definitely influenced just by some older, like, ar arcade games, and, like, the, the game that I made problematic, um, or, like, a 8-bit sort of Atari computer games, but um, I want to ask both of you um, about this question. Anyway, go ahead. I actually got into art because of video games. I mean, when I was playing a uh, like the old Legend of Zelda two, yeah, the Legend of Zelda. I mean, I used to walk around and just visit towns, and I got into architecture that way. So for me, games were how I became interested in art because I wanted to know why things look the way that they do. Uh, so. I, I guess I started backwards, whereas other people get into art and then get into games or vice versa, but that's where I found my appreciation for it. I mean, and always collage. I mean, lately it seems that collage is the biggest sort of thing in game where we just like to take things that are already made and just sort of slap them together, which can result in very sort of humorous kinds of things. Yeah, um, we're kind of the opposite, I guess, of Tale of Tales. It's like we have a lot of influences that are outside of games like in the sense of like we really I guess our, our best example of that would be either our game Fatal which was based on the, the myth of Salome um, and is also like a very strong um, like theme in throughout the history of painting you'll find a million like uh, paintings of Salome holding the head of John the Baptist and in fact we were so inspired by those paintings that we wanted to make a video game that had uh, the same theme and could Sort of deliver on similar emotions that we felt while looking at paintings like those. Um, um, but then also we have our game Biento Lete, uh, which is based on, uh, which was actually sort of inspired by, I'll say more, it's not based on any, any one specific work by uh, Marguerite Duras, uh, she, who is a French author. Um, and uh, we were very much inspired by her books, her movies, um, the music that was sort of inspired by her books and movies. I mean, so we kind of wanted to make a game that sort of fit into that idiom. Um, and um, so it, 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 it's sort of like we take all of our, our inspirations that we always have and try to make games out of those things that touch people in the way that uh, we, those things touch us. Like we want everyone to feel those things. 
And so we tried to make a video game that can kind of um, give people that experience of, um, of, of either a story or, or, or of a, another work of art or, um, or in the case of the game we're working on with now, which is called Sunset, where we're, we're making it a completely original story and we're trying to like suddenly apply these same things that we've applied to our last seven games like to a, a completely original story, you know, something that we didn't just pull out of um, um, art history or culture at large, but something that's purely out of our own heads. So it's kind of a weird uh, thing for us to do for us anyway. But um, yeah, um, I'd say it's about more, for us, it's more about um, taking inspiration in the world or in a sensation and I don't know, trying to give that same feeling to whoever's going to play our games. That's that's cool. I think I think the interesting thing with this whole process is like um, it kind of goes like I think it's very valid if it goes both ways. Like you know, a lot of people I think a lot of people do get into specific kinds of art from video games. Like I saw, you know, Eco. Um, I found out about the the uh, surrealist painter. Oh God, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but. The, the art style for Eco was like influenced by this like Italian the, the Chirico, surrealist painter, um, and I got into to that stuff because of just like looking at the art. Yeah, yeah, uh, Giorgio di Circo, um, and um, like Silent Hill. Like I found out who you know like Francis Bacon because that like Silent Hill is like extremely influenced by like Francis Bacon's art. Um, and yeah, I don't know, like, I think, so I think it can go both ways and it's really um, interesting to me when games can actually bring people back, be a lens to bring people back to some of this work um, that yeah, otherwise exactly. they, they would not, other yeah, otherwise they'd not see. Um, oh, it looks like Diana just <laughs> pinged out. Oops. <laughs> Well, well, I guess I guess here. it is. Yeah, I guess it's one now. Um, do you have a thing that you want to pimp out? I know you have a Kickstarter. <laughs> pimp out. Yeah, next week we're starting our Kickstarter. Starting our Kickstarter uh, for our new game Sunset. Um, that's gonna happen on Tuesday. Um, thanks for letting me pimp that. <laughs> oh no problem. <laughs> um, well, I I'm sorry that Diana got pinged out, but she co-curates yeah. a Vector Fest. Um, and uh, her her Twitter is oh I think her Twitter's on the screen but you should follow her um, and she's like done an MFA in a lot of uh, art and game intersection and um, yeah I don't I don't know what I would have to pimp out but um, I just want to thank you uh, Aria for coming thanks so much and thanks Diana too um, I really yeah, enjoyed no, thanks Liz oh, thanks Liz cool oh there she is <laughs> oh she's back do you want to do you want to pimp out something before we go Diana. I'm glad I'm back. Uh, no, I think I said my piece and we're at the end. I'm sorry I DC'd again. Oh, it's okay. Um, do you, uh, um, so could you just talk, um, say something about wh when's the next time that you're going to curate uh, Vector Fest? Uh, 2014, February in Toronto. Uh, just follow us on Twitter or follow me and you'll find out about all of our neat sort of events because I think we're planning some other stuff, but I don't can't say yet, but probably. Excellent. Okay, I think I think uh, uh, we're done. But thank you so much for coming on, Diane. I really appreciate it. And thanks again, Aria. Thank you for having me, and it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. Uh, bye thank, all. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in. We really appreciate your participation. Uh, and this has been a fantastic panel. We are just on fire today. Uh, we are going to, for our audience here, we are going to take a brief intermission while we get set up for our next panel. We are having a change of schedule. The panel on music games and game music, which was going to be on Channel 4, is now going to be on Channel 3. And we will then uh, resume from there. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>